This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the equilibrium constant Kc. The equilibrium constant Kc is a constant for reaction at a specific temperature. This means it is temperature dependent. Its value gives an idea of how far a reaction proceeds. Here we have a reaction in which reactants A and B react together to form products C and D. The lowercase letters in front represent the coefficients in the balanced equation. Here we have the equilibrium constant expression for the above reaction. In the numerator, we have the concentrations of the products C and D raised to the powers of their coefficients. In the denominator, we have the concentrations of reactants A and B also raised to the power of their coefficients. An important point to note is that the equilibrium constant Kc is calculated with equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products. Next, we look at an example of how to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant Kc. So in this example, we are given the amount in moles of each reactant and product present at equilibrium. We have 0.095 moles of carbon dioxide, 0.045 moles of hydrogen and 0.0046 moles of carbon monoxide and water vapor. We are also told the volume of the reaction vessel which is 1 decimeter cubed. So next we'll calculate the equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products. To do this we divide the amount in moles by the volume of the container which is 1.00 decimeters cubed. So here we have the equilibrium concentrations of the carbon dioxide, hydrogen, carbon monoxide and water vapour. Next we write an equilibrium constant expression for the reaction. So in the numerator we have the carbon monoxide and water vapour, in the denominator we have the carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Next we input the equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products. So next we multiply the concentration of the carbon monoxide by the concentration of the water vapour and we divide that by the concentration of the carbon dioxide multiplied by the concentration of the hydrogen. This gives us a Kc value of 0 0.0049. Next we look at the significance of the magnitude of the equilibrium constant Kc. We'll do this by looking at four reactions, their Kc values and the position of equilibrium. The first reaction is the decomposition of calcium carbonate to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. The Kc value at 298 Kelvin is 1.9 times 10 to the negative 23. This very small value of Kc tells us that the equilibrium lies to the left and the forward reaction hardly proceeds. The second reaction is that between hydrogen and oxygen to produce water vapour. The value of the Kc is 3.2 times 10 to the power of 81. This very large value for Kc tells us that the equilibrium lies to the right and that the reaction goes to completion. Next we have the decomposition of dinitrogen tetraoxide to produce nitrogen dioxide. The value of the Kc at 298 K is 4.61 times 10 to the negative 3. This tells us that the equilibrium lies to the left and that the reaction mixture contains mostly reactants. And the final reaction is that between nitrogen and hydrogen to produce ammonia. At 298 K the value of the Kc is 640. This tells us that the equilibrium lies to the right and that the reaction mixture contains mostly products. So from this table we can see that the higher the value of the Kc, the further to the right the position of equilibrium lies. And conversely the smaller the value of Kc, the further to the left the position of the equilibrium lies. So let's end with a summary. In this table we have the magnitude of the equilibrium constant Kc and the extent of reaction. If the Kc is greater than 1, the equilibrium lies to the right and the equilibrium mixture contains a higher concentration of products. If the Kc value is equal to 1, 
the equilibrium mixture contains equal concentrations of reactants and products. And if the Kc value is less than 1, the equilibrium lies to the left and the equilibrium mixture contains a higher concentration of reactants.